Pre-Calc chapter 9, section 6. So this is kind of introduction into polar graphing. So we're going to be talking about plotting points and converting between rectangular to polar. So rectangular form is what we've been graphing typical. Rectangular, rectangular coordinate plane is if you look in the uh, graph that we have an x and a y axis and our points are um, written as x comma y. That's rectangular coordinates. Polar graphing is a bit different. So the polar coordinate system is from a fixed point O, which is called the pole or the origin. So we have the pole or the origin here, which we usually put at the origin of the coordinate plane, similar spot. But we have the polar axis here. It's the initial ray from O. So here we have the polar axis. And then we have some other point up here, which is R theta. So notice how it's not xy. This point is written r theta, where r is the directed distance. r here is the directed distance O to point P. What is that length? And theta is the directed angle counterclockwise from the polar axis to the segment. So our theta value. So this is going to bring back our trig from first try. And that's all we're doing here is this right triangle. So if I drop a vertical line from that point to create a right triangle, and we have our theta value, we can write some of our basic trig from this. So if I look at my sine of theta, that's going to equal my opposite, which is my y value. Oh, this would be my x. So it would be y over my hypotenuse, which is r. If I multiply both sides by r there, I find that r sine theta equals y. I can do the same thing. Let's do it to with cosine. So cosine theta is equal to x over r. And so if I multiply both sides by r, r cosine theta is x. And the last one I want to write down here is tangent tangent of theta is equal to y over x. I guess we do one more, which is just Pythagorean theorem, that x squared plus y squared equals r squared for the right triangle. So we can write down these formulas, which we're going to use these same formulas here again in a second. But those are the four formulas we'll be using to convert back and forth between rectangular and polar. So we're just basically plotting points using our trig, our theta and our uh, directed distance r, which is like our hypotenuse of the right triangle. So let's plot these points. So 3 comma negative pi thirds. First thing I realize is that this 3 right here is our r, which is our distance, negative pi thirds to our theta. So when I actually plot this, I kind of plot in first order. I plot the y value, which is really here, the theta value first, the second value first, theta. So negative pi thirds is along this segment. So this right here is negative pi thirds. And then my distance is 3. And so from the pole, I go 3. And notice how we have these radii here, which kind of like a bullseye. We have 1, 2, 3, and that would be the point. So this point here has a angle of negative pi thirds and a length of three. We have multiple representations for all these points. So it's always r comma theta plus or minus two pi n. And these are just the our coterminal angles from our trig. The other one we can write, which is more confusing for students to, to grasp here, is we can also use negative r and then we can only add pi here. What you're doing with that, let me show you this picture. I could write this same point by referring to the one that's 180 degrees away. So this blue point right here, which has 2 pi thirds is the angle. The distance here is 3. So if I made that a negative 3 and wrote it as negative 3 comma 2 pi thirds, the negative 3 just says instead of going in that direction of 2 pi thirds, we want to go in the opposite directions. So if I was to plot that, I go 2 pi thirds first. So there's 2 pi thirds. And instead of going 3 up, I'm going to go 3 the opposite direction and you get the same point. So that's another coterminal point. 
So the negative R value just means the opposite direction, and then you have your coterminal angles like you did in our trig functions. So we can convert between our coordinates here. So we have polar coordinates that are R theta. R theta is polar, and rectangular is X, Y. So here are the formulas we wrote down at the beginning of our slide. These two right here help us go from R theta, so from polar, to rectangular. Then the other two here help us go from rectangular, Y, X, to theta and R, polar. So we want to convert this. First thing to realize that this is going to be r comma theta as the form. You should notice the pi 6 is our theta value. So we need to figure out which formulas we're going to be using. We're going to be using the formulas that have r and theta in it. So we're going to be using this set of formula. We want to find x. x equals r cosine theta. So let's plug in our r and theta. So r is 2. Cosine of theta is pi 6. So then we need to evaluate that to find x. What is cosine pi 6? And that is root 3 over 2. So if I multiply root 3 over 2 times 2, you find your x value is 2. So you can see how you have to bring back your unit circle of values here and still be able to recall those. So our y is our sine theta. So y equals 2 times sine pi 6. Sine pi 6 is 1 half. So 2 times 1 half is 1. So this ends up being the point 2 comma 1. 2 1 is the same thing as 2 comma pi 6. So like this, if this is x, y, we want to convert to polar. So I can do Pythagorean theorem. So I can do 2 squared plus 2 squared to equal r squared. So that's 4 plus 4, 8 equals r squared. So if I square both sides, r is going to be 2 root 2. Now, we also need to do tangent of theta is y over x, so 2 over 2. So tangent of theta is 1. So you do the inverse tangent. Where is tangent 1 at? And so tangent is 1 in the first quadrant and the third quadrant. But where is the point 2, 2? 2, 2 is in the first quadrant, so our theta value here has to be pi force. So now we can write our polar point. Our polar point is our r value, comma, our theta value. And that would be the polar point. Some of these points are a little easier to do. So like this point right here, negative 1, 0. If we plot that first, negative 1, over here, 0 is this point. So that point has a length from the origin of 1, that's our r value, it has a theta value of pi. That's it. So this one down here is similar, 0, negative 5. For that one, it has a distance of 5, and it has an angle of 270, 4, 3, pi, halves. So you can write that point. You could write this the same thing as negative 5 comma pi halves. It's the same thing because a negative 5 means go opposite direction from the pi halves theta. So that's how to convert points back and forth between polar and rectangular. Now I want to convert some of our equations. So convert two polar forms. So here is one some rectangular form. If I graph this equation, x equals 4 is a vertical line through 4. So that would be that vertical line. If we want to convert that to polar, well, we have a formula for x. We know that x equals r cosine theta. So let's substitute that in for x. If we do that, you get r cosine theta equals 4. Now, when you're writing this into polar form, we want to isolate our r. We want to get r by itself. It's kind of how we like tend to isolate y in rectangular form. I have to say r for polar form. So then I can divide both sides by cosine theta. So r equals 4 divided by cosine theta. But instead of writing this division of cosine, I could write that as a multiplication of reciprocal, which is secant theta. So that's how I write the equation for that vertical line. For part b here, we have x squared plus y squared. So that portion right there 
I could substitute in for x and substitute in for y and then simplify, but I already know x squared plus y squared that is. That is r squared. So I can use that to help myself out. Then I need to still substitute in for y. y, I know, is the same thing as r sine theta. So we use that substitution for x and y, the formulas for that, what, what x and y is equivalent to, to help me uh, get rid of my rectangular variables and get down to my polar variables, my r and thetas. Now we need to try to isolate our r value. At this point, we can factor out r here. So we have r minus 8 sine theta equals 0. Now, the only way for this to be true is if one of these two factors equals 0. So we can set them both equal to 0. So we have r equals 0, and we have r minus 8 sine theta equals 0, and solve both of those. So for this one here, I can add the 8 sine theta both sides. And here are our two equations, r equals 8 sine theta and r equals 0. If your r value is 0, you just end up with a point. Um, you actually end up with a pole. So then we usually use this equation to represent uh, the equation for part b here in polar form. So let's describe and convert to rectangular. So the other way. So this r equals 1. So this is saying that if I'm graphing in polar form, r is 1 means I have an, a distance away of 1. It doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. The distance is 1. So I look at that, I end up with this shape. It's a circle that has a radius of 1. That's what the r here is uh, noted. So if I use my formula sheet, or if I recall my kind of circles, I don't have my hk is 0, 0, so it's x squared plus y squared equals 1. So it's kind of a review of your conics, kind of why this is connected to our conics. In part b, we are just given the segment, uh, the theta pi fourths, which is right here. So it's any point that has that angle, pi fourths. So realizing that we're at pi fourths here, that this slope, or what's our rise and run, is the same. It's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So our rise and run are equivalent, so our slope is 1. And so if I'm writing my equation in slope intercept form, it's just going to be y equals x, 1x plus y equals 0. So this would be the equation of that line. So you can just use our slope or our, our theta to write our equation in slope intercept form. So the first two are, are just using some kind of common sense or common knowledge to quickly write the equations. The other two might take a little more work here. So if you're given r equals cosecant theta, not quite as easy to write into rectangular, but we need to realize that x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. If we can then write or find that r cosine theta or r sine theta within our equation, then we can substitute x or y in for those so that we get to a rectangular equation. Well, cosecant is the same thing as 1 over sine theta. So I can multiply both sides by sine to get r times sine theta equals 1. And I don't know r sine theta is y, so this is just y equals 1. There is the rectangular form. That will be a horizontal line. And the next one here, we have r equals 2 secant. So it's 2 times 1 over cosine theta for right the reciprocal which is r cosine theta equals 2, and r cosine is x, so we get x equals 2. So this, again, is the rectangular equation for this polar equation. So we're just converting back and forth between polar to rectangular and rectangular to polar. So that's the in, uh, intro to polar coordinates, um, how to be able to convert points and convert equations for between rectangular and polar gravity. We'll see you tomorrow.